First of all, thank you for coming. And I'm really encouraged to see so many young people in the audience because the world belongs to you and you are the ones who possess the world to save. What I want to talk today, this evening, is the impacts of climate change is having all-encompassing all security impacts in several factors. It touches on our lives, in all sectors of living, and many of the impacts are so severe that they go up to the point of securitization, that it has a security impact and security implication not only for people, for our societies, for our countries, and the international security system. For example, the impacts of climate change is having a very adverse effect on food security of people and countries. The changing water patterns, the lack of water for irrigation, the changing patterns of monsoon and rainfall is impacting on the food productivity capacity of our lands, impacting negatively on the food security of people and the states. And whenever you have a case of food security, it breeds tension in society and communities. It goes up to the point where societies begin to have conflict amongst themselves. It goes up to a level when states can enter into conflict. There are two very concrete examples. The rise of food prices in Tunisia, which was triggered by a drought in Russia, which led to the food price rise, eventually led to the Arab Spring. The current Syrian civil war is a result of the very nature of the drought that happened in the countryside for two to three years that led to the farmers coming to the town, which was the ripe ground for an in ignition of any unrest and ultimately led to the Syrian civil war. We live in an interconnected world. So insecurity anywhere can lead to insecurity elsewhere or everywhere. So what happens in Russia can trigger insecurity in Tunisia. What happens in place X can lead to insecurity in place Y. We now ha also have grave concerns and issues about water security because the water cycles are changing due to climate-induced conditions. And therefore, many of our rivers are not charging in the same cycles that the ecosystem demands. Therefore, there are water shortages in many countries. There are water shortages both for humans and animals and also for irrigation. There are now tensions between states due to access to transboundary river water that can lead to all sorts of tensions and eventually can also lead to conflict. My example of South Asia here again is that there are brewing conflicts and tensions of water sharing between Pakistan and India over the Indus water. There is a tension between India and China about sharing of the Brahmaputra water. And these are great rivers that support large number of people in South Asia. Imagine if tensions can go to conflict. These are all not only conventionally charged countries, these are all nuclear countries. So we are talking about big scale risk here coming from issues of water security, which is again climate induced. We are now seeing water security for the sale, sake of human consumption. Many people don't have access to safe and drinking water. So therefore we are seeing many forms of waterborne diseases coming to many places and causing large number of deaths. So water security, if nothing else, can lead to loss of human security. It can also lead to conflict between states in a large scale and a man large manner. We are also now seeing loss of livelihood in many cases because of the climate-induced conditions. For example, in my own country, Bangladesh, there is a severe problem of saline intrusion into agricultural land and into the Sweetwater rivers, on which a large number of farmers and fishermen depend and they are gradually losing the livelihood on which they have depended for ages traditionally. So the livelihood of people is being impacted, so therefore it leads to social destabilization, it leads to economic insecurity, and in many cases social disharmony and co lack of cohesion in society. We are also now experiencing severe cases of sea level rise that Alexander talked about. It has been indicated by IPCC's analysis and reports that even if we do the best mitigation as we have promised now, 
the sea level is going to rise anything between one to three meters in the coming years and decades. In the case of Bangladesh, a one meter sea level rise will entail a loss of 17 to 20 percent of Bangladesh's land mass. A very small country like Bangladesh with a very high density of population, with a total population of 170 million people packed into that very small land, a 20% loss to the sea, according to our country strategy paper, it says that Bangladesh alone will create 30 million climate refugees. Mark my word, 30 million climate refugees. Europe hasn't been able to cope with a few thousand Syrian refugees because it has completely destabilized many political systems in the European countries and societies. When we have 30 million people on the move from one country to another, it no longer remains an issue of that country. It becomes an issue of national security. It becomes an issue of regional security. And it will certainly impact the stability of the international system and international security. So in the coming years and decades, as sea level rises, we will be seeing large number of people on the move, and that can be totally destabilizing our peace and stability in the world. Earlier this year, I went and briefed the UN Security Council on the security implications of sea level rise, and the consequences are really dire. I would also like to mention that when the sea level happens, it will completely submerge many of our big and mega cities. Eight of the 10 large cities in the world are on the coastline. Cities like Mumbai, cities like Shanghai, New York, London, and many more big large cities will be completely submerged. It will not only submerge the facilities there, it will also submerge the economic centers of nerve centers that is located there, sending out economic shock waves to the international economy and system, for which we are very, very ill-prepared. I would also like to say that sea level rise will also impact the global population in general, because over 50% of the global population today lives within 100 kilometers from the coastlines. And many of those people will be, become homeless, they'll become climate refugees, or sea level refugees. With the impact of climate change and with the impact of sea level rise, we are also going to see countries vanishing from the map of the earth, which is such a sad story. Most of the Pacific Island states will be lost in the coming years. Beautiful countries like the Maldives will be lost to the sea. But the bigger problem is that we will not only be making climate refugees out of these countries because the people have to be resettled, we will also be entering into a very large legal minefields because of the reason that a changing shoreline or a completely vanishing of island states will also mean that we will be completely destabilizing the maritime boundaries we have drawn for ourselves after years of work through the UNCLOS system. A mere changing of a shoreline can completely throw out of the window the whole maritime stability that we have now have through the maritime boundary system of UNCLOS. We will be losing much of the economic zones that this country has once exercised their rights over. So we don't know what the international legal system is going to play out like when we have the cases, when we have losses of not only territories to the sea, but we have complete countries vanishing in the face of climate change. So climate change is not something that is remote. It is happening everywhere. It is a global problem. It is a problem that touches every country. Some people I talk to think that it is a third world problem. It is not a third world problem. It's a global problem. It's a civilizational problem. The world has never faced a crisis of this nature that can totally destabilize the international system and its stability and peace, that can completely destabilize the international order that we have built for ourselves. And it is time that we understand the security implications of climate change. I've only listed a few.
because of the lack of time. But there are many, many more security impacts that we'll be facing in our daily lives, in our societies and our countries. And for that reason, we all got to pull it together. We've got to fight it together. Because it is not your problem and my problem, it is everybody's problem. And in this battle, we either sell together or we will sing together. And the prospect that as human community, we are engineering to understand the problems and we must fight it together so that we preserve the earth for young people like you and the people who are coming after you. Thank you.